Okay, welcome to another video from Togatech. My name's Dave. In this uh, series of videos, we're going to be attempting to build a flight simulator cockpit um, based roughly on the design of the A10 Warthog. Now, first thing I needed to do was to come up with some designs for the cockpit. Now a great source of this I found on the internet was a great source of designs here but these two are the two I favoured. I first went along and looked at Dogfight Boss who do a, a series of free plans and you can build these cockpits out of cardboard. Um, if you look in their download section you'll see there's a, a list of aircraft or cockpits You've got the A10 here, you've got an arcade style, the F18C and so on. Um, they do it in various sizes as well. Now I attempted to build one of these but I found the cardboard structure was too weak to hold a lot of my um, joystick components and switch boxes and so on. I'll, I'll no doubt if you build it out of the correct style cardboard which they recommend 4mm and 10mm and you can also have it professionally printed it will all come out beautiful but um, I tried to make it out of old boxes and bits of cardboard that I had in my loft and it was far too flimsy to hold my peripherals so but their designs were quite useful so I do recommend taking a look at this. You can download the plans for free and you might be able to utilise some of their cockpit designs which is what I have done myself. The other source I found was from this guy here. It's from Dimebug and he builds a A10 cockpit obviously out of timber he's used here and he's got all his plans are downloadable for free from his Dropbox. I'll leave links in the description as to where to go to these websites but as you can see he's got a few drawings here this is the center console of the A10 and this is all made from ply, MDF and various types of timber and all the uh, detailed panels are all available for free for download and these are his side consoles and the curvature. Now what he's done here is he's done the side console separate to the curvature of the cockpit which was something I didn't like personally so what I've done is I've um, sort of amalgamated his design for his centre console and the side panels together with the design from Dogfight Boss here you take a look let me just show you and you can take a look here at what I'm talking about now I've modified the plans using free piece of software called Inkscape which you can download just type in Inkscape and you'll be able to download it and I've modified the side panel as you can see this is actually a side panel from the dogfight boss a10 but I've modified it so that I can use timber battens here to interconnect all these ribs. Now this I'll leave a link to so you can download this page if you like. It's, it's done in a scale of one millimeter to one centimeter. So if you did want to print this template off to attach to some timber to cut out, you'll need to enlarge this image up by a thousand percent. Now you can use various software to do that. But if I just show you, see this incorporates the two panels here for the switches and it gives you the curvature of the outside of the fuselage, all with one rib. Now because of my limited space I'm doing a length of my sides to only three ribs but the full version is actually five ribs in length but you can you can adjust this whatever way you like and I've done an 80mm 
hole there just to pass cables through so that when we wire up all the panels for the switches I've got somewhere to run all the cables through. Now so as I say if you want to use this as a template to cut your ribs you're going to need to increase the size of this document before printing it. Now an easy system I've used for that is a PDF file so I've downloaded um, Acrobat PDF Reader which is here so if you open this up in in Adobe Acrobat Reader you can see the distance between there and there is 79.79 millimeters now that one millimeter to one centimeter is the scale so this actually needs to be 80 centimeters tall now you can either copy the dimensions off of here and trace it out onto your bit of timber or you can when you go to print this if we go over to print now so we go print here you've got some options for printing now I'm going to rescale the size of this print so if we go to size custom scale now I'm going to scale this up to 1000% ok now obviously that's not going to fit on your standard A4 piece of paper so what you'll need to do is a poster print for this so if we go to poster it will show you how many pages it's going to need to print this to 1000 scale So it's going to take four pages to print this out to the right scale. And then you just run off that print, just do print, that will print off and then you can use that as your template to stick to your timber. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to print these off and then we'll go to the next stage of showing you how to attach it to the timber and cut out one of these pieces. Right, welcome back. I've printed off the full size PDF file for the rib to one of our consoles. The other things you're going to need are some sellotape and a pair of scissors. Now this, if you've done it correctly, done it as a poster print, these should all line up together. So all you've got to do is there'll be like a, an overhang, I think it's about 5mm overhang, but you've got these little marker crosses in the corner there, I don't know if you can see that. Just in the corner there's some little crosses and they go on top of each other to line them up. Top and bottom, so that will go there. And then you just sellotape that. You can trim them all down if you want to, but I'm going to do this to save a bit of time. Just tape those two pages together and go on to the next part is this one here. Now that's just a blank page so that's probably somewhere in the centre. Come back to that after. It's a bit like doing a jigsaw puzzle. Do the edges first. So this is the next one. Align your two crosses and this gives you a one-to-one -one scale template for one of the ribs. As you see this will be a left hand, sorry, a left hand rib but if you just flip it over, it then becomes a right hand rib. They're both identical. Just work your way through, joining the patterns together. So you cross to cross. Come on. 
Eh, won't bore you too much with that. I'm just going to speed through this and then I'll show you the finished result. So there's our template cut out from our poster print of all our individual A4 sheets. Now the ribs I'm making from 12mm MDF. So what I'm going to do now is stick this pattern to the MDF like so with a little bit of um, spray mount or some prick stick. And then I'm going to take this out to my workshop and cut these all out. Okay, so I'll come back to you as soon as I've got these all cut out. Okay, so what we're doing is um, we're trying to build a representation of the A10 tank buster cockpit. This uh, little plan here, I'll include all the pictures and the description and the detailed templates. I'll put a link in the description below. But this is the layout of the side panels to an A10 cockpit. Now this is uh, scaled but full size. Um, what I've had to do because I've got limited space in the room where I've got my simulator, I've had to reduce the length of these down to 840 millimeters. Now the standard length, so if you're going for a full size cockpit, they're 945 millimeters. I've gone down to 840 to get it in the space I've got provided. I've also extended the width of this part of the panel here from 160 millimeters to 180 millimeters. For the main reason is I've got this lovely little button box which I've done a review on and I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. Uh, that I want to incorporate into this simulator. I know it's got nothing to do with the A10 but there's an awful lot of switches I can use in there and it's also got directional axes on there and um, 
it's got mode buttons etc so I want to use this in my simulator so in order to incorporate this into one of my side panels I've extended the width of this from 160 millimeters to 180 millimeters right so when I'll be making the tops of these panels these sit, sit on the ribs that you've seen in the previous part of the video I'm going to use this stuff which is called foam board now it's two like sheets of thick paper and in between it you've got a foam core it's easy to cut and it's very versatile this is only five mil thick but in order to increase the rigidity I'm going to do two layers of this making it 10 mil thick you can buy it in 10 mil but I just happen to have a lot of it in the five mil so let's lay this out so the length of my panel is 840 millimeters so there we go let's get some tools here so it's 840 millimeters my panel by 180 millimeters line long uh, wide so 840 that happens to be exactly 840 by 100 80 millimeters wide now I'm going to give myself a little bit of overhang so it will overhang the side of the boxes of these panels so I'm going to make that 185 so I've got a little bit of overhang 185 Move that out of the way. 185. There we go. So let's just draw a line down there. scalpel blade and we'll just cut through that okay. now because as I say this is only five mil I'm going to do a duplicate of that so we can make it up ramp it up to a 10 mil thick which will be a lot stronger bonded together and make a very rigid piece on there. Now previously I made a template to fit around this console. So the console there is going to slot into that hole there so that lays flush. Now to do a little bit of chopping about just to make sure that fits neatly around there. So I'm going to use that as my template. That's going to go on there. So let's just line this up. That's it, that's our area here that we've got to cut out to put that in. So again just with our scalpel. It cuts very easy this stuff. That's what makes it ideal for this.
we go. And that's the second one. So we'll glue the two together and fit them in. And fit our button box in place. So I've just painted the internal panels in a matte black, as you can see here. For the outside skin of the fuselage I use this which is called Corex which is a thin plastic membrane it's used for protecting floors but it um, it was ideal for this because it's easily flexible and I've just positioned it over the outside of, uh, of one of the consoles and I've used some little pinhead nails to act and look like rivets and pinned it along the rib sections. I've then painted this in a grey colour. This is just a grey wood primer to give it the effect of the outside aluminium skin of the fuselage. I've then printed off some decals using transparent paper and then applied them to the outside skin of the fuselage did a little bit of weathering with some a uh, black wash acrylic black wash and I think it looks quite impressive I'm quite pleased with the results and here we have the internal I've lit both consoles using green LEDs and I've added in a couple of extra switch panels that I've made previously for my Boeing 737 flight sim which you can watch the videos I'll leave a link in the description below but here you can see these are two of the panels I produced for the Boeing but they fit quite nicely in here and I can utilize the switches on these through a Leo Bodner card and here we have a shot of the complete outside I think it looks reasonably well Boeing panels I've added in my Cytec heavy plant control switch personally I'm impressed with the results I hope you'll join me in part two where I'll be building the uh, MIP the main instrument panel for the front of this A10 using the same principles in this video well thanks again for watching please like and subscribe and I'll see you in part two.